My setup has gone through several changes throughout the years, but now I have a workspace I'm proud to show off, and it's hella comfortable. This is my productivity slash gaming setup. I work as a freelance video editor and a motion graphic animator, so I need an okay laptop. Powering my setup is this 2020 Acer Nitro 5 that I got literally a week before the lockdown started. It can handle my workload pretty well, but you can start to see its weakness when it comes to 4K editing. Yeah, I'm thinking about replacing it soon. It can game pretty well though, and being a gaming laptop, it can sound like a dead engine sometimes. It's hooked up to this 27 inch AOC or AOC monitor, whatever the pronunciation is. It's amazing for gaming with the 144Hz display, but terrible color accuracy for creators. During the time of purchase, this was the only one I could afford. The laptop and monitor are being held up by this cheap ass stand I found on Lazada. If you're wondering what Lazada is, think Amazon, but for Southeast Asians. The quality is terrible, and the cable management is a nightmare. As you might have guessed, there was a bit of a budget constraint at the start of putting this setup together. Oh, and if you haven't noticed, the stand is tilting on the side a little bit. But don't worry, it's holding up just fine amidst all the weight it's carrying. Just like me. For my peripherals, I always go for the wireless version, since I want to keep my desk cable free as possible. The mouse I'm using is the Razer Viper Ultimate. It's a bit of a pricey mouse, but it gets the job done. And it helps you with those quick flicks when you're playing competitive FPS games. But seriously though, after purchasing this mouse, my rank in Rainbow Six Siege increased dramatically. I'm not saying that you should go out and get this mouse right away if you want to improve on your FPS games. But what I'm saying is, uh, it does help. It comes with this charging dock, which is a bit of a struggle to make it work but you can always use it wired when you don't have the patience for it. It also glows red when your mouse is running low on battery, which is a great feature. Or sometimes the mouse, or sometimes both. I don't really know anymore. Go fix this razor. Oh, and did I mention that it's so light? It's super light. The keyboard I use is the Anpro 2 with the gator on red switches. If you don't know what that means, <laughs> neither do I. I'm just reading this out of the box, honestly. I added an o-ring to reduce the noise when typing so I don't annoy the people on zoom calls and the people I live with. I have a love-hate relationship with this keyboard since the overall build is great but the software is pretty crappy. It sometimes forgets the hotkeys at input so I have to redo it all over again on the software and two of the lights are now stuck in red. The polymers I'm using is locally made. For its cheap price, the quality is amazing and they even included a rubber feet to stop it from moving around. Plus, it's always great to support local sellers. The mousepad I have is the Razer Strider XXL. It's a hybrid mousepad, uh, whatever that means. It's a good mousepad to use, especially for FPS games. It doesn't move around when you swing your hand, and it's waterproof as well. I spilled a good amount of coffee and water on it already, and it still looks new. Well, to me at least. Also, it's a gift from my sister. Another gift I got from my sister is this light bar from Baseus or Basseus. It can, it can, yeah it does that sometimes. It can light up my whole setup with three different tones. White, semi-warm, and warm. Perfect when you're working late nights or writing something on your journal. The headset I'm using is the Razer Black Shark V2 Pro. I originally wanted the Sony WH-XM4, but the Bluetooth technology for computers are not that amazing yet and I need very little input lag when I'm editing or playing video games. You can use the XM4's wired, but that defeats the purpose of having wireless peripherals on my setup. This is a pretty decent headset, but I wouldn't recommend it for creators and audiophiles, since the audio sounds a bit muddy, and the earpads can smell a little bit, especially when you've been using it for long periods of time, especially if you live in a country with a warm climate. The build is good though, it looks a bit similar to what pilots wear, and the mic looks ridiculous. Yeah, not gonna happen. <laughs> good thing it's removable. Moving on to the microphone, what I have is the Razer Siren Mini, which I'm using to record this voiceover. Yeah, like Razer, get over it. It's hooked up to this, yet again, cheap stand from Lazada, and I added in a foam cover for protection. 
Now, for the thing that carries all of these crap is the standing desk from Arc Ergonomics PH, another locally made product. Actually, I'm not sure if it's locally made or it's just sold locally. I used the cheap table for several years and because of that, I developed back pain. Getting a sit-stand desk helped relieve my back pain. Well, kinda. I'm not really sure, maybe it's just a placebo effect, but either way, I feel way better. It comes with this grommet thing or access hole. Whatever it's called, it's highly convenient that I have a place to store loose cables when I need to charge my phone or keyboard. And these adhesive velcros are a nice hack to keep things tidy. This table only took a few minutes to assemble. Nope, just kidding, it took my dumbass hours. The cable management is probably one of the best ones out there. And of course that was a lie. It's a total mess underneath. But the velcro ties and these adhesive clips helped a ton. If you're wondering how I got this shot, well, this is how. This one I'm sure that it's locally made. It's made from 100% actually I don't know, I think it's Abaca or something. Either way, it's a cool coaster. And not far from it is a USB hub from Arico. I paid extra to have this drawer underneath this table. It's good for keeping stray cables like my wired headset. It's also where I store that hideous detachable mic, plus some notes, a smartwatch charger, and a pen spinning pen thing pen. Finally the chair. This is the cheapest chair with the most function I found on Shopee. This chair can do this and some other stuff, and like the stand from Lazada, it's also leaning onto one side. What can I say, I'm a cheap fuck. <laughs> There's also this triangle thing that has a questionable function. But mainly, I use it to hang my bags. If you for some reason want to see what's inside my tech bag, let me know in the comment section and maybe I'll make a video about it. If you enjoy this video, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Joking aside, if you stuck around until the end of the video, thank you and I hope you subscribed because I'm sweating my ass over here. And if you're wondering what phone I'm using, I'm using the Samsung A30, which I use to record these two videos, which you can watch right now. Go ahead, watch it.